two very, very similar words are methodology and method. And in fact, they're so close to each other that a lot of like professionals in this field use one when they mean the other. I, the literal professor of this stuff, will sometimes pause and say, wait, did I just say methodology when I meant method? Did I say method when I meant methodology? Eh, mm, okay, right. So if you get things mixed up, that's okay. But I want to kind of give you the breakdown for understanding why we mean different things when we talk about methodology, when we talk about method. And you might notice our good friend ology on the end of one of those words. Ology means the study of right in this context and so you might think and you are kind of right that methodology is the study of methods right that's one of the things it is so a good definition of methodology uh is this one used by barkin and schoberg which is the way in which scholars think about the relationship between methods and research questions basically it's how we kind of relate what we know about the world into how we make decisions about what methods to use to collect data, right? Or gather information about the world. You can think about it as methodology is why, right? If I'm providing a methodology section in something I'm writing, I'm explaining what the presuppositions, what the ideas behind what I did in this project were, right? Or if I'm laying out the methodology for a project, something that students do very often or that researchers do when asking for grants, right? We are justifying why we are using these particular methods. But when we're carrying out the work, what we're focused is on how we are doing it, right? So the methodology is why we do the thing, the methods are how we do the thing, right? Methods are technical knowledge. You'll see this most clearly in the example of statistical analysis. For people doing statistical analysis, they need to know how to work the programs, and they need to understand the theory behind how the math works, and they need to understand some a whole bunch of like technical pieces about, oh, I can do this, and I, that'll make sense, or I can do that, and it'll make sense, but this other thing won't make sense. Um, Similarly, for people who conduct interview based research right the technical knowledge they have is both about how to set up interviews how to structure interviews how to conduct interviews and how to analyze the data later right those are technical skills. And so the thing is that lots of researchers use the same techniques right doesn't really matter what your methodology is that predicts what your techniques that make sense to gather information and learn about the world are. Um, however, the reason you chose those is grounded in the types of research methods that will allow you to answer your questions and understand the world, which is tied very closely to your ontological and epistemological positions. Now, there is no necessary requirement, right, that your ontological and epistemological positions that you take have only one right answer at the level of methods, right? Methods are basically ontologically and epistemologically neutral, right? I myself am an interpretivist. As an interpretivist, I use a bunch of methods. When I'm doing statistical analysis, I am just as much as interpretivist as when I'm conducting ethnography, right? But the reasoning I use to get to here is why this is useful comes out of my ontological and epistemological positions, right? And so what you will frequently see is clusters of methods correlating with ontological and epistemological positions. But it's important to understand why those correlations happen, but not to make automatic assumptions about whether someone's methods, what they can tell you about what that person's ontological and epistemological bases are. 